the Fantasy Sports Podcast. Hope you guys have enjoyed the show thus far. We're going to be sticking a little bit with this Sunday night football game. A little bit of start set advice now. Fair word of warning. You might have to bear with me here because I wrote all of my start sit options for this game much earlier in the week. And hearing all the news throughout the week about both of these teams, I wasn't expecting to be sitting here a little bit blank in terms of how I might have to change up my tune a little bit here. But we're going to be doing this off the cuff. And let's just start off with the two players kind of of contention who kind of got me into this mess. As Anna said, he's off to a crazy start in fantasy this week, getting 48 points from Broncos defense and Javante Williams, LMAO. I, listen, I expected the Broncos to win this game, right? But I didn't expect them to play as handily as he also said. He still has King Henry, Josh Allen, Justin Jefferson, and Jamar Chase to play. Well, look for historically good numbers from you this week, my man. I think you're all set to have a potentially 200-point game this weekend. So I'm really excited for you. But let's get into the weirdness of some people who might still be on the fence about who to start, especially those with players in this game, because I really don't know. And like I said, I'm going to have to start off with the two players who got me into this mess in the first place. On the Jets side of things, Devontae Adams. On the Steelers side of things, as Russell Wilson. I mean, here's the thing. I love to say that you can start Devontae Adams immediately. I love to say his status and upside immediately skyrockets in this game. I don't think it's going to be the case, A, because, you know, he still has that hamstring injury to consider, and, you know, as much as the Jets might want him to rush back, he's not going to look as good right away, and I kind of want to see one more game where Aaron Rodgers works with the weapons he already has. Not for nothing, you know, I felt like that game against Buffalo did have a lot of interesting things in there that proved to me that Rodgers can incorporate Wilson and Hall, but it was still too, quote-unquote, Lazard-centric, if you know what I mean. And then, not for nothing, I kind of feel like the Steelers' defense is a weird defense to kind of push someone against right away in their first start for a team. So I kind of feel like Devontae Adams is an easy sit. Not necessarily an easy sit, but a sit in my mind. And then Russell Wilson... I might feel like in a deeper league, he could be a sneaky option at a quarterback position. I don't necessarily know what to expect from him. This is like his first start in quite some time. But if he buys into the Steelers' culture, it will really pay dividends for him. Because he just needs to find a culture for him that settles him down to the point where he's not as insistent on certain traits of his game. I don't expect to see him run the ball as much. I don't want to see him throw the deep ball that much. So in this game, I'm really looking for him to be more methodical, more calm, more poised. And not for nothing, I feel like the Steelers will be ready to help him with that progress in his career. So look for him to potentially be sneaky start here. But now, I'm going to have to rejigger a little bit. Where initially I said Brees Hall was an instant start, I'm kind of on the fence about him now. Because I do feel like the Jets need a run game to even think about incorporating Adams as much as they want to. But at the end of the day, I kind of feel like they are selling out to allow Aaron Rodgers to let loose here. But... I still think Brees Hall has a lot of upside. I still think just because, you know, he's so good in this receiving game and such a physical runner who can really have a great offensive output for you. I'm on the fence about him. And I'll ultimately leave it up to Brees Hall owners to interpret that because I really can't say if I would start him knowing where the Jets' offense is projecting to go. And then as well as Braylon Allen, who really right now is kind of feeling hard done by because he was a guy who was getting a lot of touches in the run game as well. And now who knows what the run game will look like for the Jets. And then I said sit Garrett Wilson. I'm going to stick with that one just because. And I 
personally this week did choose to sit him and it felt a little weird because the guy who I'm bringing him to replace him is a rookie on a terrible team and Xavier to get but I felt like I at least needed to do something to kind of project how I feel about Garrett Wilson and it's through no fault of his own I, I, I consider him highly in this Jets offense but it's just it's a situation where you're kind of maddened by how he's being let down by this organization but then the player like Mike Williams for the Jets he is really now a wild card here because if you look at this receiving core it's really deep you have Garrett Wilson, who should still, in my opinion, be the wide receiver one, but ultimately is falling to the wide receiver two. You now have Devontae Adams. You have Lazard, who is already working wonders with Aaron Rodgers this season. And then you have Mike Williams, who out of all of them might be the guy that, as Andres said, the trade just felt like a slap in the face. I had to trade Garrett Wilson immediately. It's, it's, not, it's not your fault. It's not his fault. And it's not anyone who decides to start or sit him's fault. It's just that the Jets are really a little bit too stuck in the Aaron Rodgers world. And I don't know if they'll ever get out of it. And if they don't, it's going to leave a dark stamp on the history of this Jets team in this er Pacific era in the future. For a lot of Jets fans, it's going to leave a bad taste in their mouth. And it's not going to feel good talking about a player like Garrett Wilson, talking about a player like Brees Hall, when it's all said and done. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think about that opinion in the comments, or if you have your own. But I do think that it feels highly uncomfortable now having to either sit or trade away Garrett Wilson in your fantasy league after having such high hopes for him this season. But in terms of Mike Williams right i actually think that of all these receivers he might be the one aaron Rodgers' play style suits the most i love him a lot as a kind of prototypical quote-unquote aaron Rodgers kind of receiver he's someone who can really be potentially a breakout star for this team now adam is going to get a lot of attention so it's going to leave room for, as Andre kind of alluded to a couple days ago with the whole Garrett Wilson situation, going to lead to more opportunities potentially underneath for guys like Wilson and then Mike Williams, who, not for nothing, is not only a solid route runner, but can, can extend the field. He can be the deep threat that the, the Jets could utilize to a certain effect if the run game's any good going forward. But at the end of the day, I feel like Mike Williams is now someone who was seen as an afterthought for the Jets, but could now potentially be their wild card and X factor moving forward. So I think he could be a potential start in any fantasy uh, medium going forward, not just this game. On the Steelers side of things, <laughs> I, did, I interestingly enough said to start Justin Fields, but look where that has ended up with me for this week. So uh, yeah. Russell Wilson, not for nothing, man. I appreciate all you've done for the Steelers, but you truly messed up my segment when it came to talking about starting and sitting the Pittsburgh Steelers here. And then I was thinking about the Steelers' skill positions, right? And I was thinking about guys like Fryermuth and Pickens in this game and thinking about the matchups for them. And I was saying to sit them, but now... Both of Pickens and Fryermuth, now that Wilson is the starter, potentially could see their best traits utilized to the best of their abilities. As Andre is asking me what my specific fantasy lineup is for this week. And I will pull it up here because I myself had to make a lot of drastic changes this week as well. Without further ado this week, I am behind a little bit. The other guy who I'm facing had Alvin Kamara, who fortunately enough had a pretty bad game, and now I'm favored in my matchup. I have Baker as my starting QB. James Cook is my running back. We'll see how he looks if he's even back in this game against Tennessee. DeAndre Swift is on a bye week, and I don't really have a 
backup running back I trust, so I'll let that slide. And then my wide receivers right now are Amon Ross St. Brown. I actually did not bench Garrett Wilson. Looks like I will be giving him one more try. I say I likely am my tight end position. Leggett is my flex option, actually. I have the Pittsburgh defense, ironically enough, in this game. Hopefully they will have a couple of takeaways. And, of course, my man Dicker the kicker holding it down for me in the most valuable position in fantasy. Uh, Why well, I digress. Um, in terms of Pickens and Fryermuth in this game, I feel like, like I said, some of their traits will be utilized. Some of them will be underutilized in this game. For Pickens, let's hope that Russ has a couple deep shots in him. For Fryermuth, let's hope that Russell Wilson has a couple methodical drives and wants to utilize the tight end a little bit more. And so... It's going to depend on how you truly feel about this matchup. Again, I feel like I'm sorry for copping out on you guys, but it's just the way this game is playing out. But at the end of the day, both of these guys have great traits that could really help the Steelers, most importantly, Russell Wilson in his first start. But you can also see a game where both of them, as I said, I think they'll be all over Rodgers. I agree, and if you're talking about the Pittsburgh defense. But at the end of the day... The Pittsburgh offense is going to have to put up points. I am not too concerned about the Pittsburgh defense at all in this matchup. I think that they have enough talent in their front and in their secondary to hold it pretty well against what the Jets throw at them because I really don't know what to think of this Jets offense going forward. But of course, to end off this segment, going back to Andre's comment about Najee Harris, I do think Najee Harris is the most likely start for anyone in this Pittsburgh Steelers offense. I think that he adds a lot of upside. He's going to be a big part in terms of ball retention for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And ultimately, I think that's the way to go if you know you want to work Russell Wilson into your offense if you're Mike Tomlin. So we kind of had to do this off the cuff. I thank you all for your comments throughout. It really helped me out here. But let me know what you think about this game in the comments. It's going to be bizarre. It's going to be wacky. But to close out today's show and the week here on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, I have a very special new segment, my first ever fact or fiction segment to close out today's show. We'll be right back to talk about it right after this short break. <laughs> 